Hey there, I'm Sarah from SRAM, and today I want to walk you through a semi-regular bike check that you can easily perform at home that will make for safer rides and fewer roadside issues. Parts of this check should be performed before every ride, while other parts can be done every few weeks or about as often as you wash your bike. I'll cover service suggestions while referencing SRAM service materials, but if you're ever unfamiliar or unsure about a procedure, please reach out to your local professional bicycle mechanic for assistance. Prior to every ride, check to see if your chain is clean and properly lubricated. Keeping up on both of these items will drastically extend the life of your drivetrain and keep it efficient by reducing friction between all the moving parts. After brushing off any dirt or debris, apply oil to the rollers starting at the power lock or link for a reference point and work your way around the chain. Make sure to wipe away the excess oil with a lint-free towel before riding and follow the lube manufacturer's guidelines. Watch our drivetrain cleaning video for more information on properly degreasing and lubing your drivetrain. Before every ride, you'll also want to check your tire pressure. On most tires, there's a suggested range of tire pressure printed on the sidewalls. There may also be a maximum pressure rating for the rim. Make sure to use the lower of those two ratings to stay safe. Your tire pressure preference may vary depending on conditions, but make sure that your tires are not so soft that you can press them all the way into the rim. You'll want enough air pressure to get traction without jeopardizing your rims during an impact. Properly inflated tires will maximize riding efficiency. For consistent tire pressure readings while riding, consider using Quark's TireWiz wireless pressure sensors. If you're unsure what tire pressure you should be running, consult the new Axis online pressure guide at axis.sram.com forward slash tire pressure guide. Next, check your headset. Place one hand on the front brake lever and squeeze. Place the other hand on the bike at the base of the stem and gently rock the bike forward and backward. You shouldn't feel any play between the frame and the stem. And if you do feel play, review your headset manufacturer's instructions for adjustment. Now let's check your brakes. For disc brake bikes, lift up the front wheel and spin it. Check that your rotor is clearing the brake pads and that your front brake is working. Pull the lever and watch for the wheel to stop spinning. If the wheel does not stop, this is an indication that your brakes may need servicing. Perform the same check with your rear brake. Do you hear rubbing between your rotors and your pads? If so, you may need to adjust your caliper or straighten your rotor. Next, take note of how far your lever pulls inward. Does it feel normal? If your lever pulls all the way to the bar, this can mean that your caliper pistons could use an advancement, that your brake pads need a replacement, or that the system may need to be bled. Keep in mind that SRAM brake pads should be replaced once the full pad measures less than three millimeters in width, including the metal backing plate. SRAM rotors should be replaced when the track measures 1.55 millimeters or less. Check out our brake pad replacement video for more information on inspecting your brake pads for wear and how to replace them. If your bike has rim brakes, you should inspect the brake pads for wear and debris often. While checking the pads to make sure that there's still plenty of pad material left, make sure that wear is occurring evenly across the pad. If there are strange wear formations, you should inspect the rim for debris or any damage. The braking performance of rim brakes depend heavily on whether or not the rim is true, so make sure to check your wheels for any deformations. Additionally, uneven pad wear can be caused by an improperly aligned caliper or pads. Make sure that the caliper is centered around the rim, that the pads are moving inboard evenly, and that there's no rubbing when spinning the wheel. Make sure that your wheels are true by lifting the bike and spinning each of the wheels. Inspect them one at a time. If you notice any major hops or wobbles in the rotation, Inspect the rim for damage and the spokes for tension. You might need to have your wheel tensioned and trued. You should also routinely check your hub bearings, which should feel smooth and resistance-free. If you feel excessive grit or friction in a hub bearing, consider replacing it for a smoother, more efficient ride. If you have tubeless tires, consider the last time the sealant was replaced. Tubeless sealant only lasts for so long before it becomes dried up and ineffective. Remove the valve core from your valve stem and use a nozzle-tipped bottle to inject fresh sealant into your tire. If you're riding a wheel with tire was installed, watch your tire was sealant injection video to learn the procedure. You should also inspect your tires for damage to the tread and remove any debris. Now, make sure that your through axles or quick releases are tight and seated all the way through the frame or fork. Thread the through axles in until they're entirely engaged. If your through axle doesn't have a lever, set a torque wrench to the manufacturer's torque spec and then tighten the through axle to that spec. To use a torque wrench, find the correct size torque bit for your through axle Install it into your torque wrench, set the torque on the dial of the wrench to the desired spec, then rotate the wrench until you feel the click. 
Make sure that if there is a release lever, it's in a safe position and won't flip open or get caught on anything while writing. You can tell if the quick release is tight enough when it leaves an impression on your palm and cannot be turned after it's been closed. Checking your cranks for play is also a good practice. Push inward on the pedals while holding the bike as stable as you can. If you feel play coming from the bottom bracket area, you may need to adjust your cranks or check the bottom bracket for play. Also, inspect your cranks for structural damage or excessive wear. If your cranks have been compromised, replace them before riding again. Check your drivetrain functionality to make sure that shifting is smooth and your derailleur hanger is straight. A bent derailleur hanger will cause poor shifting performance and cause accelerated wear on the drivetrain. To make sure that your derailleur hanger is straight, remove the rear derailleur from the hanger and let it dangle by the chain. Next, use a derailleur hanger alignment tool to align the axis of the hanger with the straight axis of the wheel. If you've already aligned your derailleur hanger and your shifting still feels suboptimal or is making a lot of noise, you should degrease and clean your drivetrain, including the cassette, chain, chain rings, and derailleurs. You should also check your components for damage and replace any parts that show excessive wear. If you're riding a cable actuated drivetrain, make sure that your cable tension is properly adjusted before riding. For electronic access drivetrains, check and make sure that your batteries are charged by looking for a green light when you press the access button on each component. If the light flashes red rather than green, your batteries need to be charged or replaced. Check that the bolts on your cockpit are tight and torqued to spec. Using a torque wrench is the safest way to achieve this. The bolts on this zip stem have a torque recommendation of 4 to 6 newton meters and this zip bar is rated for five newton meters. For your bike, reference the user manual or printing on the stem for your specific torque requirements. Be sure to use the lesser of the two torque specs when tightening your stem faceplate bolts around your handlebar. For traditional stems, tighten bolts in an alternating pattern to ensure proper torque. The torque value for seat post clamp bolts are varied and specific to each company. We recommend that you torque your clamp to the lowest of the two numbers between the clamp and the post. Some frames have a maximum torque recommendation for the C2, so be sure to reference your frame manufacturer's user manual before selecting a torque for your clamp. Use a torque wrench to check bolt tightness, then check the saddle clamp bolts on the seat post to ensure the saddle will not slip during your next ride. And this concludes our routine road bike check. These simple maintenance inspections will help to identify and address potential ride hazards early, and will help to provide you many miles of smooth, safe, and quiet riding on your SRAM products. As always, if you notice any damage to your bicycle frame or components, or if there's anything you're unsure about, please stop riding and reach out to your local professional mechanic for assistance. Subscribe for more maintenance videos like this from SRAM, and thank you for watching.